Is this a, a very debilitating blow, the kind of macro data and the Chinese jitters we got yesterday? Vibhav Kapoor of ILNFS joins us now. Morning, Vibhav. Uh, a very happy 2016 to you. Uh, not Thank very. you and same to you and all the, your listeners. Thanks a lot. But it doesn't seem to have been extremely happy for the markets, at least the first effective trading day yesterday. Uh, what do you make of the market's recovery? Is it going to be a very uh, bad blow, the kind of PMI data we got across the globe, China, India, US, as well uh, uh, those uh, Chinese jitters in the stock market? Uh, so I think uh, yesterday was a sort of a precursor to what you are going to see uh, for the whole of 2016 uh, in the sense that I think this is a year which is going to be dominated by global events and global markets and not so much by domestic factors. And we have a lot of uncertainty in the global markets. Uh, you have the U.S. interest rates. We don't know what trajectory they will take. You have China from where all sorts of data keeps on coming. Uh, and you have the Middle East situation, the geopolitical situation. So there are a huge amount of uncertainties. And I think these are the things which are going to dominate the markets uh, for, the, uh, for 2016. Okay. Vibhav, hi. Good morning. So when you say that yesterday was a precursor to this year's trend, uh, do you get a sense that in the first quartile of the year itself, we could see the market uh, you know, hitting those 2015 lows of 75.40 and maybe even breaching them? It's quite possible. I think, uh, you know, the positive side is that you have, uh, uh, you know, positive domestic factors. Hopefully the earnings growth will increase as we go along. Uh, but the valuations are reasonable. They are not all that low. Uh, and if you keep on seeing, um, uh, you know, uncertainty and things happening in the international markets, uh, you could always see the markets go down further from here. But I think they are in the process of bottoming out. Uh, but this bottoming out could take quite some time and it could be quite violent and quite uh, volatile. Okay. How are you approaching the earnings season? Will it hold more nasty shocks? Should we uh, see more downgrades or would, is that at least over? Uh, no, I don't see any major uh, improvement happening uh, in the third quarter. Uh, and maybe a little bit in the fourth quarter. What's really going to be important is uh, uh, how earnings pan out in FY17. Uh, right now, again, I think analysts are a bit too optimistic. You're going to see some more downgrades, uh, hopefully not as much as you see last year. Uh, but I think some downgrades will be there. Uh, but again, a lot, I think, is also going to depend on what sort of valuations uh, you get. Uh, depending on what happens in the uh, international market. So you could get go down to 14 times, you could go up to 16, 17 times, and that's what's going to dictate the uh, volatility in the market. So what does an average investor do, a retail investor do at this point, Vibhav? Uh, someone who had started in, you know, increasing their SIP allocations in, at the start of 2015, that enthusiasm waned by the end of the year. But in 2016, what is the recommendation? So you keep on uh, adding, but you keep on adding at lower levels. Don't chase the market just because it's gone up 100, 200 points in some week. Doesn't mean the trend has changed. I think the trend is going to take quite some time to change. And uh, But at lower levels, you will find more attractive stocks. You'll find valuations looking more attractive. Uh, so you keep on adding at lower and lower levels gradually. Okay. Uh, do you see the downside protected at all? Uh, uh, I mean, uh, I, I know Sonia asked you about that 7540 mark, but uh, uh, is it that at least the downside gets protected because we seem to be a, at least an outperforming market compared to the other uh, uh, economies? Yeah, but outperformance is again, you know, it can only happen to an extent. And if you see a lot of volatility in the global markets, and I expect that to happen, mind you, I mean, uh, and then I'm saying, as I'm saying, maybe you could even go down to 14 uh, times, say, F517. And if F517 is going to be, say, 500 rupees, you could conceivably go down to 7,000, although I expect that not to happen. Uh, but if you're really looking at a downside, downside, yes, 71, 7200 could be possible. What are you penciling in by way of earnings for 16 and for 17? Uh, for 16, we are um, at about 435 rupees on the Nifty. 
uh, which I think is still about uh, five, three, four percent below what market consensus is. And for 17, um, I think uh, on a optimistic side, it should be around 500 rupees, which is about 15, 16 percent growth from this year. But it's still below consensus, which I think is around 530. Okay. Do you think 2016 could be a year where investors make more money in fixed income rather than in equities? Well, we don't expect uh, too much of uh, interest rate cuts, maybe at best 50 basis points. Uh, so you'll have um, some improvement in yields, but not too much. Uh, and therefore, I think even on the fixed income side, it's going to be a pretty moderate year. Mid caps will continue to outperform, you think? Uh, that's only up to a point because I think uh, quite a few of them are not trading at more expensive valuations uh, than even some of the large caps. Uh, so as this difference increases, there will be there will be pressure on the mid caps. So I think this this time you may not get as much outperformance as you got last year. Okay. Uh, what would you then uh, you know where would you seek shelter? Would it be IT pharma variety at all? Because pharma also has been so many landmines. Oh yeah, that's that's the real difficult point here because uh, we don't see even IT outperforming. Uh, I think there are too many headwinds. Uh, we've been talking about this for quite some time. The whole model for the IT sector is changing, and so companies will need to adapt themselves to the new model, uh, and that's going to take quite some time. And plus, you have the global uncertainties, uh, which can always impact IT, IT adversely. Uh, pharma, I think, is the best is over for the time being. Uh, in fact, I would go as far to say that maybe the bull market in pharma is over for some time to come. Uh, so that sector is also going to be an underperformer. So that leaves you with very little uh, space to hide. Uh, I think the best way is to, as I said, accumulate uh, good quality, good company stocks at lower valuations and at lower market, uh, market levels. All right. Uh, well, any favorites at all in the mid-cap space, like, say, NBFCs, which many people seem to favor? Anything at all, auto ancillaries? What in the mid-cap space may be the relative outperformance? Yeah, I think I like two sectors. Uh, one is the NBFCs, uh, some of the housing finance companies particularly. Uh, and the other is the construction sector where, you know, you are seeing a lot of activity happening, a lot of road projects are being awarded. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, the order books of a lot of the construction companies are uh, uh, improving significantly. So that sector should do well. Also, maybe power transmission is another sector where some of the mid-cap should do quite well. Okay. All right. Uh, Riba, we'll, we've run out of time. we leave it at that. Thanks so much for joining us. So that's a bit of a circumspect view coming in on the markets. Perhaps yesterday's uh, big drubbing that we saw could be an indication of the sign of times. Uh, with that, it's a wrap on Bazaar. But Chartbusters is coming up next.